of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. The man with a thumb isn't seen very often on our nation's highways, but he still exists a vagabond, a man on the move, and often a menace to society. The Highway Patrol has joined other law enforcement agencies in a program of education, warning both driver and hitchhiker alike of the possible dangerous consequences of this practice. Well, thank you for stopping, young man. How far are you going, old-timer? Well, just as far as you'll take me. Hop in. What's the idea? You do as you're told and you don't get hurt. Drive. We've got a new case. A hitchhiker who's been pulling a gun on his victims. Oh, come on. They're not still picking up hitchhikers. Yep. Stoops. Victims in the next room. I'd like to have you talk to him. All right, come on, let's go. My name's Walter Miller, truck driver. Oh, don't get up. Mr. Miller, this is Mr. Matthews. Hi. Hi. I'd like him to hear your story. Now, first, uh, what'd the man look like? Like a guy who needed a ride. Kind of down at the heels. And a bushy head of hair, like, like he couldn't afford a barber. And dirty clothes, like, like, like he'd been walking a long time. If I'd known he was going to clobber me, he'd still be walking. Yeah, well, could you be more specific? His height, his weight, coloring. I didn't get a chance to study him, if that's what you mean. As soon as he hopped in, he pulled a gun, told me to drive to the Mill Road and Highway 48, and clobbered me, took my wallet, and scrammed. Would you know him if you saw him again? With that bushy head of hair? I should say so. Only now, on my money, he'll probably get a haircut. Any other way you could identify him? I don't know. His face looked kind of funny close up. Like, like old leather. Old leather? In weather beaten? I don't know. I guess so. Only one question I'd like to ask. Yo, what's that? How come he picked me? I only had $30 in my pocket. He didn't pick you. You picked him, sucker. Turn it off. Now take out your wallet. Carefully. Your wallet. If you want it, take it! We got to get out of here. Joe, what happened? Your beard. The stoop, the big fat stoop, made like a hero. Started to rough me up and pulled my beard off. Joe, Joe, you didn't. What do you want me to do? Let him go so he goes bill to the cops? Come on, let's get out of here. Okay, thanks. The lab says the truck is clean. You mean I can go back to work? Yeah, that's right. And thanks for your cooperation. <laughs> what cooperation? 
All I can tell you about the guy is that he needs a haircut. And that he has $30 that belongs to me. You think you can catch him on that? Well, I'll tell you one thing. We'll try, and I promise you that. Wish you luck. Thanks. Well, I guess he won't pick up any more hitchhikers. I'll make books somebody else does. Headquarters. Well, Joe, now it isn't penny any hold ups any longer. It's murder, and the cops will be right behind us. Seven bucks. Seven lousy bucks. It's all he had in his wallet. Why did he fight me? I told you not to take a gun. Someday you'd use it. How much money do we have all together? Thirty-two dollars. And this makes thirty-nine. Doesn't get us very far. No. But we sure can't stay here. Move on to the next town. We'll find ourselves a pigeon there. A fat one this time. One with more than seven bucks. Get ready to move. Was he when you found him? He was dead. The only evidence was some gray hair he was clutching in his hand. Glad's analyzing it now. Whoever did it took off up the road. Left a good footprint right on the other side of the car. Glad's doing a flash from it. Any witnesses? No, none. The victim's wallet was missing, though. We did a make on him from the car registration. His name's Martin Hoffman. His wife's been notified. Okay, thanks. I don't think we should have stopped here, Joe. Why not? As good a place as any. But the police will be looking for us. We're too close to the last place. The police aren't looking for us. There were no witnesses. And who could connect me with that old man that got into Hoffman's car? Nobody. Oh, you have all the answers, Joe, but I'm still scared. When we started, you promised nobody would get hurt. If I'd known there'd be this, I wouldn't have come with you. You worry too much. We managed to fool the cops in seven states, and that makeup kit's going to carry us all the way to the coast. Okay, thanks. That was a lab. They caught with a surprise. You know that gray hair Hoffman was clutching in his hand? It isn't human. It came from a wig. They found some matter under his fingernails. It's a grease paint used by actors in makeup. That figure scan. Take a look. Hit trackers, M.O. Let's see. First robbery pulled by a character needs a haircut. Second, an old man with whiskers. And a third, by a crew cut mug with a mustache. That's what you mean. All right. Contact every newspaper, radio, and TV station. Some of you in a left tunnel to people not to pick up any hit trackers. Right. Matthews. Oh? All right, thanks. Hold it. Oh, hold on. Got something else for you. The lab boys. Got a good make of the footprints. Oh, the guy's about 170 pounds, six feet tall, early 30s. On our hitchhiker. He's six feet tall, 170 pounds, and his 30s. Yeah, that's all we've got so far. We're just working from footprints. 
Ken. You got to take reports. A hitchhiker. Take a look. Coming 1,400 miles in six days. That's an awful lot of territory for one man to cover by himself. My guess is he's got an accomplice who picks him up after each job and they move on fast. Yeah, you're right, but Hoppin's been dead four hours. So we know he's in this area. You think he could be backtracking? I don't know. He never backtracked before. Has he killed before? No, that's the whole thing that's bothering me. Now, take a look here. See this? We know he's going west. Yeah. See, with his knowledge of makeup, our hitchhiker could be an actor. I'll check with the actor's guilds in New York and see if there's any show on the route he's following. I'd better alert the hotels and motels, see if any of their guests happen to be using theatrical makeup. Joe, what's the matter with you? If the cops find this wallet on us, it'll tie us right to the murder. Oh, stop worrying. I'll get rid of it. Joe, what's happened to us? I don't recognize me anymore. And I don't recognize you. It's the makeup. Joe, you've killed a man. And you sit there joking about it, and I hate you for it. What do you want me to do? Walk up to the nearest cop and say, here, arrest me. I just killed somebody. I don't know. Relax, Dolly. We'll soon be on the coast. Joe. I want to go home. What's home? A lousy two-room cold water flat in the third floor? Or your mother's house? She hates my guts. The only home we've got is where we make it. You and me. Oh, baby, there's, there's lots of jobs out west. It's the place for us. And nothing's going to stop us. Joe, I'm so confused. You know, uh... We've been operating the same way in seven states. First, the guy that needed the haircut, then the old timer, and the mustache. You know, the cops aren't exactly stupid. With this Hoffman dead, they could be getting a little excited. I think it's time for a change. What kind of a change? Well, there are plenty of diners up and down the highway. We'll pick our next pigeon in one of those diners and follow him to a nice, quiet spot. And we'll pick a guy with more than seven bucks. Joe, please don't take your gun with you. Dolly, you're not thinking right. Suppose I hadn't taken the gun that last time with the Hoffman character. This is more than just a gun, Dolly. <laughs> this is my friend. <laughs> His latest victim, Martin Hoffman, had resisted. Parker killed him. But the murder had netted him just $7. He had to change his M.O. to be sure his victims carried more money. The clues furnished by Hoffman's death and the out-of-state police reports had enabled Dan Matthews and the Highway Patrol to trace Joe Parker's trail of crime across the country. How's it going? Well, it's been real quiet. Not a single out-of-state car, no sign of a hitchhiker. Headquarters to 2150. 2150 by. All Tally Guilds in New York check negative. No theatrical activity on the route taken by a hitchhiker. 10-4? 10-4. you so long? Had to find the right pigeon. It's a long way to California, and we're going to make it in one jump. There's a luxury job outside that belongs to a character by the name of Shane, who lives at 472 Elm. Which one is he? We're not going to play guessing games. We'll sit in our car, wait for him to come out, and then follow him to a nice, quiet spot. Suppose he goes home. Who cares where he goes? 
We'll nail him wherever it is. This one's too big to lose. Come on, finish up. Let's get out of here. Headquarters at 2150. Headquarters at 2150. 2150 by. Starview Motel on Elman Overland answering query on theatrical makeup. I'll check it. Meet me there. 10-4? Ten 10-4. Four. Ten four. We've been here too long, Joe. Let's find somebody else. We've only been sitting here 15 minutes. Well, it seems like an hour. The cops could be breathing down our necks. And you know, it's a good thing I was called by you fellas. Otherwise, I'd have thought nothing of it. Looks like we had fate or theatrical makeup. Is that what you're looking for? No, you've done pretty well so far. Look, what they look like, what were their names, what kind of a car were they driving, which way were they heading? Well, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, and he was about 30, six foot tall, dark hair. She was a pretty thing, blonde, about 22. The car they were driving was a black convertible, old model, New York license, GS4508. And uh, when they checked out of here, they were heading west. How long ago did they check out? Well, exactly an hour ago. I'll phone it in. Can I use that phone over there? Go right ahead. Thanks. Anything else you want to know? No, one thing. Uh, leave the room exactly like it is. The lab boys check it over. OK. Uh, listen, uh, you wouldn't be needing a good man in your outfit, would you? Well, at the moment, no. But if I do, I'll call you, I promise. Will you really? Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. This is Williams. Put out an APB on a two-door black convertible, older model, about six or seven years old. New York license number, George Sam 4508. Containing a man about 30, woman in her early 20s. All units approach with caution. Suspect may be hitchhiker killer. Contact New York DMV for ownership of vehicle. Have the lab examine the Starview Motel. And we want roadblocks at Highway 64, junction of Amherst, Mill Road and Bronson, Roxbury Boulevard and Pine. What's keeping him so long? I don't know. He's taking a long lunch, I guess. He could be in there all day. For a pigeon like this, we got all day. Right. Lab boys are coming out. I got roadblocks all the main arteries out of town. Which one is heading west? That'd be the one at Roxbury and Pine. I'll be there if you want me. OK. This is it. Let's go. What's the big idea? All right, Buster. If you don't want to get hurt, do as you're told. OK. Thirty sixteen to 2150. 2150 by. The car described by the motel owner has been traced to the hillside inn on Highway 56. The owner identified the man and woman we're seeking. Noticed them loitering. I've ordered an all-out check of the area. I'll meet you there. 10-4? Ten 10-4. Four. Ten four.
Turn around and put your hands up at the car. Take it easy. You've got a lot of money on this. If you just take it easy, I won't shoot. Now, give me your wallet. Here it is. Turn around. Bank knife. Fifty to headquarters. Headquarters, why? Send all units west on 56. And the New York DMV identifies that car as belonging to Joseph Parker, age 32, transient. 10 4? 10 4. You, Mrs. Parker? Get out of the car. Come on, get out. Where is he? I know you're trying to signal him. Here I am, copper. No, Joe! Come on, you haven't got a chance. A couple of minutes, this place is going to be swarming with police. You haven't got a chance. You got just 10 seconds to do what I say. One, two, three, four. Do what he says, please. All right, what do you want? Dolly, get his gun and handcuff him to his car. Get a move on, Dolly. I'm sorry, but if I don't do what he says, he'll kill that man. I know he will. Hurry it up. All right. Let me have the cuffs. I'll do it for you. You better give me the keys. to headquarters. Headquarters, bye. Joseph Parker, proceeding west on 56. He's used with a wife and a hostage. Alert all units and set up roadblocks. Proceed carefully. 10-4. 10-4. Get me out of this. All right, all right, I goofed. Give me your keys. Okay, one. Put your hands behind you. All right, let's go. Uh, uh, careful with my arm. Careful. All right. Hold still. You all right? Yeah, okay. Watch yourself. Careful. You okay? Yes, sir. Get in my car. I'll drive you home in a minute. You're pretty lucky. All right, take him away. Come on, move. I hope you'll be with us next week. Until then, remember, no matter how new, the safest device in your car is you.
This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.